Hi everybody, Father Bill Holzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection, and I am, oh gosh, getting choked by my hat, and this is the Friday Reflection, and I am at Silverton Reservoir. This is being recorded on Tuesday of this week, and I'm on retreat during this whole week at Mama Angel Abbey, and we are reflecting on the Eucharist, and this coming weekend we begin uh, what is called the Eucharistic Revival throughout the whole United States parish to parish and diocese to diocese. With that, I just wanted to reflect with you something about this, that we are encouraged to remind ourselves of this great mystery and encourage and lift up a sense of amazement at this. And I want to just offer this a bit to you, that Jesus Christ lowered himself to become human. Remember, Jesus is God, who is all-knowing, lives eternally, all-powerful, and yet decides for our sakes, to lower himself and become a human being. But that wasn't even enough. Even after he suffered and died for us, which is still, that's amazing, uh, he wanted to be with us. He shared with us, said, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened. Now we refresh you. We hear this in Matthew. He also says in John that you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. And that, my friends, is the key to how he then, in the end of Matthew, tells us that he will be with us till the end of the age because he will be with us in the Eucharist. Yes, we can read about him in these scriptures. We can pray to Jesus, of course, do all of these things. But there's a particular uh, accompaniment that Jesus is offering us in the Eucharist that is like no other, a flesh on flesh uh, connection with him. Now, as we, as Catholics go forward with this belief, the bishops have uh, recognized that there are many Catholics who don't believe. I, um, I'm sure that is an issue they see. I don't always see that myself um, just because I'm at Mass and people come to Mass and I haven't had initially a conversation with them at that time. But there is a statement that people say when the Eucharist is offered them. We say the minister says the body of Christ and the, minister, the recipient say amen, which means I believe, right? And the hope would be that we mean what we say, not just, hey, yes, I agree, or... Uh, Thank you, or at a boy, yes, got it. But actually, amen, which goes back to the Hebrew, amin, which again means so be it, I believe. And it's a declaration that we hear, the body of Christ, and it's our response of faith that says amen. And so I want to encourage us to think about that when we're saying these things. It's not just a hospitality moment at Mass. This is a time of reverence and awe and worship. This is when you might remember from last week that we become like what we worship, right? We become like what we worship. And when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, then we can become like him. That is the goal of our whole persons. That's why Jesus became human, so that we could become more human as God wanted us to be. He took our form so that we could know how that would be, what that would look like, and how we're supposed to live that. And so we should be in amazement. I hope you are in amazement at that amazing, that incredible, or not incredible, very Difficult to believe, incredible means not to believe, but a difficult to believe uh, teaching because it seems so strange. We really take it seriously. And yet, Jesus was very clear in the Gospel of John that you must eat my flesh and drink my blood lest you have no life within you. And some people left him. They found this to be too much to receive. And he didn't go back on his words. He really turned to his apostles and said, you know, will you then leave me too? And Peter says, they say, Jesus, you have the words of everlasting life. Where are we to go? And of course, then the apostles follow him in this regard. We are called to do this. And yes, that means that there are people in other faith traditions and some in our own tradition that may struggle with this teaching uh, that Christ is present, in, present to us in the Eucharist. But I want you to think then today. So imagine Jesus is coming to your house. He's in, he said, hey, I'm going to come over to your house. And what would you do? Maybe you might clean the house. Uh, I know right now the back of the house where I'm <laughs> right now is a mess. I'd have to do some work on that. Uh, maybe we might dress up. We might, uh, I don't know, dust a little bit. And then also what kind of hospitality might you have when he comes? You'd greet him at the door. You would uh, welcome him. And then he f would feed you because of his presence. You might give him food, but his very presence feeds us spiritually. Well, we're going to come to his house. That is Holy Trinity or whatever parish you belong to. That is 
his house, and that's where he dwells in the tabernacle. And he comes to us in the sacrifice of the Mass, wanting us to partake in him so that we may become like him. We can be excited about sports, which is awesome. We can have our heroes, which is great, but all of them will disappoint us or break us if we treat them like idols or our gods. Ultimately, it can only be Jesus who can actually withstand such a thing and can fulfill our desires that we have as people, especially in need when we struggle. He'll always be with us. We hear that in the end of Matthew where he says that I will be with you until the end of the age. How do we know this? In fact, in the church, we see this and we act this out in the last rites. The last rites often people think are anoint is anointing, but actually it's the Eucharist. If we can't get to that person soon enough, sometimes they're already unconscious and anointing is all we can do. But when a person goes to an individual who is awake but yet dying, I just did, uh, I did saw, I just went and saw someone last week who was uh, ending their time on this earth and they uh, were awake. So I was able to give them even a smallest bit of the Eucharist and they knew what they were receiving. I said, the body of Christ. And they said, amen. And that, my friends, was the last rites. That was what we call viaticum, bread for the journey. Christ wants to be with us in all our days. That's why we're able to go to Mass every week. And during that time, we receive Him. So when you come to Mass this week, receive Him with great reverence. Be mindful of, of what you're receiving, whether on the hand or on the tongue. And don't just receive and just immediately move away. Sometimes people are putting their hands out and looking to where they're going. Like, pay attention to what's in front of you. And then reverently walk back to your pew. And, and while you're at your pew, uh, consider praying a prayer of thanksgiving for all God has done for you. Uh, you might again offer your petitions to him, but mostly just a prayer of thanksgiving. Eucharist means thanksgiving, and that's the appropriate response uh, when we come to Mass and receive the Eucharist. Folks, I hope that this helps. This weekend, we're going to speak. I'm going to be speaking about. Uh, we'll be celebrating this great mystery uh, on the Eucharist, and I hope that it is something that fills you up and encourages you, uh, that you will have revitalized in your heart an amazement for the Eucharist. And uh, yeah, I'll be there. Now, I want to let you know. Uh, lastly, here our new priest, our new parochial vicar. Remember a couple of episodes ago, or maybe another episode ago, I mentioned who it might be. I didn't say who it was, but I had a little shadow of who it might be. Well, now we know it is Anthony, for the Anthony Wong Fan. And he comes uh, as a parishioner of Tigard, of uh, St. Anthony and Tigard, uh, where I went to actually his first, or one of his Masses of Thanksgiving. And it was a huge Mass, first Mass I've ever been to that was in Vietnamese. It was all sung, the place was packed. It was just, it was wonderful. So uh, I were in, were in for a real treat with Father Anthony, a kind man, a hard worker, intuitive. He, he had a great a situational awareness, a prayerful man, uh, and, a, and a compassionate person too. So pray for him. Uh, he will be with us, not this weekend or even the next weekend, July 1. I thought he might come for our Wednesday school mass, but that didn't pan out since he's not yet officially uh, here. He has family and things and people to see. So uh, yeah, that will be later, July 1, and that will be his first official assignment. When he comes, I know you'll give him a, a Holy Trinity welcome like he gave me. It's going to be great to have another person uh, alongside as a priest to help do priestly ministry for all of you. And I hope that then this year will be a wonderful one where you receive Jesus and, and start to become even more fully uh, vivified and excited because of Christ's presence in your life, not just through prayer and not just through reading of the scriptures, uh, but also through the Eucharist Receive. May God bless you, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Beep, beep. Come on, bye.